Hello everybody and welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France. I'm Jane, my husband Mike's behind the camera, we're in our mid-50s, we are early retirees, debt and mortgage free, retired and living here in France. We live a really thrifty and frugal life and every Wednesday we open our home for a mid-week money chat and this week is a big big topic, it's one we couldn't put off any longer and it's all about how we, how you, how everybody is coping with this crisis in the massive rise in inflation. So let's get right into this. of reflection because we've had it good haven't we we've had it good for quite a long time we've been able to find deals we've been able to get better energy prices by swapping energy companies we've been able to shop around for fuel we've been able to go to the supermarkets and play one off against the other we've had centrally heated homes or maybe you've had centrally cooled homes. We've had double glazed homes. We've had access to medical care on a regular basis in the UK, I'm talking about here. We have had it good for quite a long time. Things got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Clothing got cheaper, books got cheaper, holidays got cheaper, going away or going out to eat got cheaper meal deals in restaurants for example at lunchtime fast food restaurants popped up all over the place supermarkets got bigger and cheaper and you could go in there and buy a mass of food at one stage in the uk when the new supermarkets came like lidl or aldi all of a sudden we could go from a normal supermarket like tesco's or sainsbury's and we could half the cost of our groceries and then the other supermarkets had to catch up and reduce their prices too so for quite a long time we really really had it good we had falling interest rates we were able to go out there and buy houses on a one percent mortgage rate we have had it good for a very long time People would say not long enough, but we have had it good. And that is why these price increases are such a shock. They are such a shock because we've had it good for quite a long time. And now we are seeing these massive increases to a point that, that it is a crisis. We can't deny that it is a crisis. So we've had it massively good for quite a long time and now we've got these huge price increases and all of a sudden we are just not equipped to cope with this. We are not equipped to cope with it at all. Which takes me on to my next point. My next point that I want to bring up is to take you back in time slightly and I want you to take go back to like the 1970s in the UK and when I was growing up in the 1970s in the UK I can honestly say hand on heart I didn't know anyone who had any money spare at all. We didn't have central heating at all. Mostly our houses there was a coal fire in one room you heated one room. Nobody was going hungry, but there really wasn't any choice in food. We didn't have the widespread of supermarkets. There wasn't the competition to sell food cheaply. There wasn't the imported clothing made in other countries where wages were less. So clothes were incredibly expensive. It was not unusual at all for mums or whoever did the knitting in their house to unravel a jumper, literally take a jumper apart and knit another one, adding another ball of or two of wool on to make your jumper bigger. It was not unusual that your clothes were worn all week and washed at the weekend and then dried in front of the fire at the weekend if the weather was bad. 
it was not unusual that absolutely nobody took a holiday. That was unusual if you did that, if you went on holiday, that wasn't normal. It wasn't normal to go out and eat. People didn't have that money. It wasn't normal to have takeaway food. There may have been a fish and chip shop, but there wasn't the other choices that you had. So it wasn't normal. And I'm not talking about the 1920s or the 1890s. I'm talking about the 1960s, the 1970s and the 1980s where I grew up in the UK. And as I said, I didn't know anybody who had any money at all. It was quite normal that if you were cold, you wore layers after layers of clothing. You went to bed with a hot water bottle. You put extra socks, you had bed socks. You had a bed jacket, which was a cardigan or something you put on to go to bed. These were normal. So. I really want people to reflect on that. As I said in my first point, we've had it good for quite a while. But prior to that, and all the way through my personal history, I didn't know anybody who had any money. I didn't know anybody who wasn't frugal. Everybody scrimped and saved and didn't waste and saved and saved and saved. So there's my two things that I want us to reflect on. We've had it good for quite a period of time, but prior to that, like I said, from my own circumstances, I didn't know anybody who had any money at all. Before I start having a chat with you about the coping strategies for dealing with this inflation crisis, as I want us to just stop a moment and I want us to reflect. And it's the lesson that my mother taught me that there's always someone worse off than you. All over the world, right now, there are people without any access at all to clean water. There are people all over the world who have no access to any safe, regular place to sleep or live. There are people all over the world whose circumstances are so precarious, they literally do not know when they are going to eat again. So in our modern world, where we are reflecting on the difficulties and cutbacks that we have to make, we are not watching our children starve to death. We are not having to hand our children over because we cannot afford to feed them. We are not working for $2 a day. We are not being completely exploited. So we are working in circumstances where the environment is so dirty or dangerous. It is life threatening. So I do want us to have some sense of perspective when we deal with these inflation crises, that there are people so much worse off than us that no matter the cutbacks that we may be making, I want us all to look around our home, at our sofas, at our running water, at our flushing toilets, at our beds with blankets on. And I really do want us to have the perspective and reflect on the fact that there are people so, so much worse off than us. One of the really big things that are worrying people are the rising costs in energy prices, in gas and electricity to heat their homes, to cook their food, to wash their clothes, to dry their clothes and so on. So I'm going to reflect on circumstances in my past and my far past and my immediate past about how we saved money doing that and how we continue to save doing that now. When we lived in the UK, we had radiators from a gas boiler and we could just set a timer and it would heat the whole house to an ambient temperature. What we did to save money is we didn't have it on timer. So we would physically have to turn it on. So yes, we would come home from work and yeah, the house would be a bit chilly, but it would mean when I was in the kitchen and cooking the dinner, that would warm me up. 
we would just put a small radiator on in our living room because we weren't using the entire house. We were only heating one room. So there's my first point to save money. Something that we always did in the past is we didn't heat the entire house. We only heated our main living room. If the circumstances are that bad, then it would be normal that you would move your bed into your main living room. You wouldn't care what it looked like, you would just want to stay warm. Something that we have done in the past is we've used what are called safety pins. And we have pinned blankets and duvet covers to our curtains to make them thicker. We put them on the back of the curtains so you couldn't see them so it wasn't unsightly. So we have literally reduced our living space within our houses and we have just heated that space. We have not put our heating on immediately. We didn't use our central heating for a good period of time. We used one plug-in heater in our living room or we used one fire in our living room. Now I'm going to get on to laundry. One thing that we've done in the past and we continue to do to this day is we don't wash clean clothes. Here's an example. If I was eating something and I spilled a bit of food on my clothing here, I wouldn't wash the whole item of clothing. I would take it off and replace it with a clean item of clothing, but this here, I would just soap and clean this area. If my children went out to play and the bottom of their trousers got dirty, I would literally, under the tap, just wash the bottom of their trousers. I would wash underwear and clothes next to our skin after one wear, but everything else would get worn all week. And like I said, we would only wash the dirty part of the clothing. More to come. There are plenty more coping strategies when it comes to dealing with those drastically inflated energy prices and lots of those are from experiences that we've had personally. We don't like to talk about anything that we haven't done or that we haven't experienced or that we don't do now. So let's go through more of those. Now one of the things that we do to cope with energy costs and we've done in the past to cope with energy costs is that the first thing that we do within our own homes is that we are wrapped up warm. So if I was at home and I was working at home and I needed to stay warm, good old leggings, aren't we? We've all got pairs of leggings and I might even have two pairs of leggings on underneath my jeans. I then might have a couple of pairs of socks on several layers. I might have a vest top, a top without any sleeves, and then a t-shirt, and then a polo neck jumper, and then a cardigan on top of that, and then a scarf and fingerless gloves. It was just the normal thing that you go to first is you wrap up you. Your body generates one kilowatt of energy and gives that heat off. Don't give it to the house, keep it within your own body. Something else that we've always done is if we've used an electric kettle to heat water, we've taken that water and we've only made sure we put one cup full in. Or sometimes we've heated that water and we've kept it in that kettle. So there are so many other things that we need to be doing to stay warm within our own homes. And as I said at the beginning, people have had it good. They're not used to doing that and they're not going to like it. Now, my mother used to say to me, if you could put your arms up down by your side, then you didn't have enough jumpers on. Just wrap up warm in your own homes, everybody. We shouldn't be just automatically thinking, let's just go and switch the heating on. Wrap yourself up first. That might mean when you go to bed, you put more blankets on your bed. It might be that you put on, as I've said, more layers of insulation on your windows. It might be that you go to bed to watch TV. Something that we used to do on a very, very regular basis is that we did have a TV in our bedroom. If there was something we used to want to watch on the TV in the evening, there was no way on earth we'd sit downstairs with all the lights on and the heating on. We'd both go and sit in our bed 
and, and stay warm that way. So we will be wrapped up warm in bed with a hot water bottle, with no heating on in the house whatsoever, and watching TV. It's an old way of getting around these things, but if it's what you have to do, who needs to be cold? Wrap up warm. One area of your home that's really costing you a lot of money in energy is your kitchen. So I'm gonna share some strategies that we used in the past, that we use now to keep our energy bills as low as possible. I'm gonna start off with batch cooking. If I have my oven on, I want it full. I will make a sausage casserole, a chicken casserole. I'll fill it and then freeze it. If I'm running my freezer, I want my freezer full. If I'm running my dishwasher, I want that full. But often people will use a sink to wash their dishes. And one thing I would ask them to do is to have a bowl full of hot water. Wash all your dishes in one bowl full of hot water and then change that water and rinse your dishes in one bowl full of cold water. I so often see people washing their dishes under the hot tap. They've either got their gas boiler pumping away, heating the water, or they're draining off the water from their hot water tank. Please don't do that. It is costing you a great deal of money. And as I said earlier about clothing, don't wash clean clothes. How many people have got teenagers or children who wear something, haven't worn it outside of the house and throw it to be washed? Don't put it back in their room, fold it up, put it back in their drawer. Nine times out of the 10, they won't even notice that you've done that. The same with bedding on beds. Here, I, I don't know what it's like in other places, but here we wash our bedding every single week. That's, you don't need to wash it any more than that. Same with our towels. We hang our towels up to dry and we wash them once a week as well. So we've gone through that. We've looked at cooking. Fill up your oven. Fill up your dishwasher. Don't have the hot tap running when you're washing dishes. Keep the freezer full up and make sure you're batch cooking because it's just one of those areas in your kitchen where you will be draining that money really, really quickly. So be very mindful of your energy use in your kitchen and please don't waste that running hot water. Now we've talked about keeping ourselves warm, we've talked about saving money in the kitchen. Let's all go on to the next, next aspect, which is about us and our personal hygiene and keeping us clean. Now Mike and I were reflecting upon this and for both of us were people growing up in the 1970s. Pretty normal for us, you had a bath on a Sunday. Most houses didn't even have showers, but we were not dirty in any way. We used to use a bowl full of water and wash ourselves from top to bottom every single day. Ladies, how many of you of my age can remember having your leg in the bathroom sink, shaving your legs in the bathroom sink? How many of you can remember washing your hair in the bathroom sink? So we were not dirty. And I think now we have this preoccupation with cleanliness and most of us do have showers. And how many people in these modern times spend goodness knows how long in there? Soaping and lathering and conditioning and buffing and exfoliating. Let's get real. We just need to be clean. That's all we do, we need to be clean. My best suggestion to anybody is set a shower timer. If you're like me and you've left the bathroom door open, you can literally shout, Alexa, set a five minute timer. You get in and out of that shower, please, in five minutes. You, if you're in the UK and you have a combi boiler, the longer you are in that shower, the longer that combi boiler is heating that water on demand. Either that or you've got an electric shower and that 
Then something like nine kilowatts in an electric shower. The longer you're in there, that's massively expensive to be in the shower for a long time. So here's my challenge to everybody to save you a ton of money in times when, let's face it, we need to. Get used to five minute showers. Now I've got long hair. I can wash and rinse my hair twice in five minutes and shave my legs and get everything from top to bottom lathered and rinsed in five minutes. Should be an Olympic sport, shouldn't it really? Because we're getting better at this. But please, if you really do need to save money, you need to be having short, quick showers and out. There are massive increases in the fuel costs for the fuel to go into your car. I did a price comparison of the price that we pay for fuel here and I turned it into dollars. In US dollars, here in France, we pay $7.06 for a gallon of fuel. That's what we pay here. So we've always had higher fuel prices here in Europe than other places. So we're used to being quite economical with our cars. Anyway, we have small cars, public transport is easily accessed here. But what if it's not? What can you do? What if you've got to use your car to get to work? One thing that we have done, we can say hand on heart that we did this for many, many years, is that we car shared. We either got a lift to work with other people, we would meet at a meeting point, and then we would all leave cars and then all pile into one car. It was just normal to do it. And I think that is a really sensible thing for people to be doing now. Get together at work, put a notice up on your notice board. Tell them where you're coming from. Does anybody come from this area? Can we car share? It's a really important thing to do. If you're like us and you're not commuting on a regular basis, we really do need to cut back on our car use. So we are really well planned on when we go to places. So if we're going to go to the supermarket and get everything we need, we make sure we only go once, once a week. So we were getting to the stage previously in the past where we could just go here and there and everywhere and that we could make 50 euros of fuel last a month. Well, now we're having to make 50 euros of fuel last two months because we are really, really cutting back on the journeys that we make. So car fuel is extraordinarily expensive. Please use your cars as little as you possibly can. And do you need two cars in your household? Could you actually sell one of those cars if you needed to? If you do need to keep it, obviously do. Can you car share? Can you car share with other people so they can give you some money towards the fuel costs and everybody then saves some money on car fuel? of the video we've had it good for quite a long time but we were often time poor and because we were time poor we often spent more money on food in different ways so people who were time poor spent money on takeaway food people who were time poor spent money on food in restaurants, for example, people who were time poor would buy a ready-made pizza or buy a ready-made curry. They would buy potatoes in a bag or Yorkshire puddings that were frozen and it was convenience. The biggest way that I can suggest to anybody out there to save money on your food bill, which let's face it, is going up in prices in scary amounts. It is scary. It's not just one price rise, it's another one the next week and another one the next week. So what you're going to have to do to save money on food is you cannot be fussy 
and you cannot be time saving and you cannot have convenience. You're going to have to make absolutely everything from scratch. That does mean that the time that you had previously for any leisure or any hobbies, you might be spending more time preparing food. You might be spending more time batch cooking and freezing and using your oven, as I said earlier, in a more time efficient and energy efficient way. You're gonna have to buy that big sack of spuds and peel it and make your own chips. You're gonna have to buy the bag of flour and the packet of cooking spread to make your own pastry. You're going to have to buy the flour and the yeast and make your own pizza dough. You're going to have to buy the tin of tomatoes and use the oil and the garlic to make your own pasta sauces. Convenient costs. You're going to save money. You're going to have to do that from scratch. It might mean that you're gonna be a bit more tired. It does mean to say that you're gonna have to be a bit more bothered. But all of those things that were convenient and time-saving cost you money. If it's a difference between being able to pay your bills or not, these are money savers that everybody can make. Not everybody's gonna like them. Nobody's going to enjoy standing there making their own dough, making their own pastry, chopping and preparing vegetables. People aren't going to enjoy that. But that's my first point that I'm gonna make about food here, is that convenience and time saving it has cost you money. Please think about that. Think about the things that you've done in the past. I've done too to save me time, but now we're gonna to have to think more about saving money. So it's all going to be about cooking from scratch and taking the time to save that money. thing I can say to anybody, the greatest money saving coping strategy that you are going to have to employ to cope with these rising prices is you've got to get organised. You've really got to do a weekly stock check. You've got to get going on meal planning. You're going to have to put together meal plans for three meals a day you're gonna have to start making more substantial meals. A big bowl of porridge, a good pasta or rice salad for lunchtime. The end of the day, those hearty meals with, like I said at the beginning, big piles of cauliflower, cabbage, carrots, leeks, those seasonal vegetables that bulk out that plate and keep people full. You're going to have to really start thinking about things as a whole family. Big words you're gonna to have to start saying to yourselves, to your children, to everybody in your household is no. All those things that can go, must go. All those bags of crisps, Americans, you call those bags of chips, snacks, nuts, chocolates, cookies, biscuits, cakes, all of those can go. If you're gonna have any of those things at all, they're going to be homemade. Because as I said earlier, convenience costs. You'll soon, soon start making less of it if you have to make it yourself. But it's got to save you money, hasn't it? So anything that can go, and I would say to people, stop being fussy. With There's a huge, huge amount of food snobbery. Huge amount of food snobbery, and it's cost people dearly because they could afford it because like I said they've had it good drop the food snobbery drop the convenience food drop the snack food what you need to do when times are tight to cope with these rising prices are three substantial good meals a day porridge oatmeal that you call that in America in the morning, a good lunch and a good evening meal and all the rest of it, those things that we've had in our diet for a long time, actually, what have they been? 
they've been luxuries and you can drop all of those to make sure everybody in your household is eating healthily and eating substantially. We cannot deny that there is rising inflation. We cannot deny there are rising prices and there is nothing more that we can do about this other than cope and cut back. But I want us to reflect on this point and it's knowing the difference between needs and wants. I want everybody who's watching this now to absolutely focus on your needs. Make sure that you do make sure that you're eating well enough, that you are heating one room if you need to, that you are drastically cutting back everywhere. Because even with drastically cutting back, you're probably still paying more. So those are the areas that we really, really have to focus on. And then let's deal with the issues of wants. All of those things can be literally kicked into the long grass for a period of time. It might be one year, it might be two years, but none of those things that you are going to have to go without are biggies, they're not important, they're not gonna kill you, you're not gonna like it. Nobody likes it. But we are having to reflect on the fact that are your needs met? Can you turn your lights on and off? Can you flush your toilet? Can you wash? Are you eating? Which brings me back to the point that there is always somebody considerably worse off than you. Let's get real about this now. And I asked people, what would you give up to make ends meet? People were saying things like Netflix, takeaways, new clothes, theatres, days out. All of those are luxuries. And if all of us to get by have to have no luxuries for a while, we are still so much better off than so many of the people who can't make ends meet at all, who are literally making the desperate choice between eating or heating. If they buy their children new school shoes, that means there's no food that week. So we do need to be reflective. We do need to say, these are our financial priorities. I keep the lights on. I keep the water coming out of the taps. I'm able to wash and I'm able to cook my food. If we are achieving those things in this difficult, difficult times, we're doing all right. We may have, and we are those people, we don't have much to put into savings. It may mean we're not earning so much money because things are costing us so much more. But please everybody, be grateful for what you have and reflect upon that. My final word is this. In these times of galloping inflation, yes, of course, we need to be mindful of the fact that prices are going to go up and we might need to put a little bit more into our cupboards. But we also need to remember this. This is the time that if we have any spare in which we can give, please give. Because there are those people that if they put their heating on, their children are not going to eat. So please don't stock up any more than you need to. And if you can give, especially here in France, to Rasto de Coeur or to the food banks where you are, please put a little bit aside for them. I want to take this moment to say that the rise in prices, that this incredible inflation is a crisis. Make no bones about it, make no mistake about this. This is a extraordinarily difficult times, for everybody. We are feeling it, you are feeling it, everybody's feeling it. We're in the supermarket picking up things and going, 
that is now beyond my budget. That was normally part of my budget. It's now not in my budget because I don't have any more money for food. I don't have any more money for energy. I don't have any more money to run my car. I, you, everybody is going to have to make drastic, deep cuts. And that isn't going to be easy for a lot of people. Some people have never experienced things that older people like us have experienced in our lifetime. And it is going to be a great shock. So I'm not underestimating how difficult this is for people. I do want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who watches. If you've enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up, even though there was quite a somber message in it. If you're not a subscriber, please go on. Would you consider subscribing? If there's a question that you want to ask, if there's something I've not raised about money saving in these very difficult times, go on, leave a comment below. We read every single one of your comments. Thank you everybody to everyone who watches and we will see you again next time. Goodbye for now.